de bien ajouter du droit à l'astre chef pour Paris, le match Italie. Hello everyone and welcome to the final day of the first ever IWBF Repechage here in Antibes, France on the French Riviera and for Italy and Canada this is their last chance. For the winner it's a ticket and a shot at a coveted Paralympic gold medal in the Parisian heartland but for the loser it's a consolation prize of a summer watching and wondering what could have been. Good afternoon, hello and welcome to everyone here on the IWBF YouTube channel. It's a pleasure to have you all on board for the final day of action here at the inaugural 2024 IWBF Men's Rolepa Charge. John Hobbs keeping you company on a Monday. It's great to have you on board. Get your comments in. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe to the IWBF YouTube channel where just over 3,000 new or 2,000 new subscribers have come on board since this repechage started as both Canada and Italy have been introduced to the crowd here at the Azure Arena and now we will have the national anthem of Canada and Italy. The national anthem of Italy, l'hymne national de l'Italy.
both teams with many different results in their group play. Italy 3-0, Canada 0-3, still reeling from that heartbreak yesterday against Iran and looking to hit back and hit back in the biggest of ways by booking a ticket to Paris. Here are the lineups starting with Italy. No surprises, Giulio Papi, Sabri Benzetti and Filippo Calasino are the big three, the trio of doom that Canada will look to neutralize today. They have some great role players as well. Claudio Spanu is one of them, Dimitri Tange is another, and some experience at the number eight with Andrea Gioretti. Italy will be starting with Giulio Papi, Sabri Benzetti, Filippo Carasino, Ahmed Raurai, and Joel Boganelli. That's the starting five, just like it has been for the last three games for Italy. Coach De Gusto putting his faith in his starting five. As you see, the Canada fans in attendance. They have been in good voice throughout this repechage. They'd love one win and one win only. That'll book their ticket to Paris. There is the Canada team. And of course, number 12, Patrick Anderson, the most recognizable figure in wheelchair, basketball, folklore, but also as well, the number nine, Colin Higgins, who is leading the way in pretty much every statistic for Canada here in Antibes. He had a triple-double in the last game against Iran. 25 points, 11 rebounds, 13 assists. It's great to have you all on board on the IWBF YouTube channel. Lots of fans tuning in all the way from Canada. Great to have you on board, especially those watching in British Columbia, Saskatchewan, and Ontario. And of course, there are Italy supporters here in attendance as well. They have been making a lot of noise here at the Azure Arena, as you see coach Matteo Ferriani giving some last second instruction to his team. Two wheelchair basketball nations with competitive fire entrenched in their DNA. But only one of them will be dreaming of Paris. One of them will be along the Champs-Élysées at the Eiffel Tower. And one of them will be at home watching on TV. Three officials for today, Haraki Ono, Thomas Paya, and Matthias Quintana. Juan McLanus is the commissioner on the table. And we are prepared for the penultimate game of the Repchage. France, Morocco follow on from this. That is due to start at 7 p.m. local time as Benzetti and Anderson compete, and Italy get the first possession of the third. Ticket to Paris underway. The Netherlands and Germany are already booking their plane tickets. Will Canada restore faith in the Americas, or will the European invasion continue? As Canada get the ball off the miss, and Colin Higgins, who Canada will look to for big points tonight. They'll also need Pat Anderson to play the game of his Repchage career here in this one as well. Ball again goes out of bounds. Anderson swiped away from him by Bedzetti. A bit of a stop start to this match. As Chad Jasmine gives it up to Higgins, a step jump. And inside it goes, and the finish from Vincent Delaire. Hey, 
Starting five for Canada, Garrett Stepchuk, Vincent Delaire, Colin Higgins, Chad Jasmine and Pat Anderson all getting a touch of the ball on that possession. Carasino thinks about it. Maybe was overthinking that shot. Higgins. Higgins gets bumped. Dishes it off to Anderson. Nice pass inside and the finish from Delaire again. Four quick points for Vincent Delaire. Who has a wingspan of just over six feet seven. Does Delaire. Very good defender and so far getting it done offensively as well for the Canadians. Here's Higgins. Canada up for the love right now. Higgins banks it home. Quick 6-0 start for Canada. Great start for them. And Italy still in neutral right now. Puppy. Puppy inside, Benzetti off balance, that's off. Good defense from Higgins, and Higgins collects the loose change. Here is Anderson. Great start from Canada here. Two of two, three of three, excuse me, from the field. A step up to Delaire now, they miss their first field goal. Delaire, who was... On four points, with Higgins on two, misses his first attempt. Italy yet to get going. They've been arguably the team of this repcharge. Leading in so many statistics, including points, where they average 75 points a game, and they're finally off the mark with Ahmed Rouai. Also lead the way in field goal percentage, just a shade under 50% here in Antibes. Here is Higgins. Higgins looking for options, finds it on Stepchuk, who had to really reach to get it. Eight to shoot for the Canadians. The lob pass finds nobody but the IWBF staff sitting courtside. You have to admire their... Uh, Quick reflexes there as the ball was coming to them. Bedzetti. Papi, who's been the player of this tournament thus far, misses his first three-point attempt. He's hit more three-pointers than anyone. In fact, he's the only player that's hit double figures for threes as he, Anderson, misses the two. These are the top two teams in three-point percentage at this Repshaw, so expect a lot of quick-fire offense, a lot of long shots going, as Puppy has it. Six on the shot clock. Carasino. Carasino over Higgins. That's off. And Anderson has it. Good defense early on from Canada. Really aggressive, but patient as well. Very well disciplined, as Anderson has it. Four minutes played in the first. Anderson looking for options, decides to go it alone, and that's why. Eight to two for Canada, and Italy won a timeout. And for a team that has started strongly in all three of its games, Italy now in unfamiliar territory as Canada have taken the early ascendancy with 6.01 remaining in the first. They lead 8-2. Vincent Delaire has four. Higgins and Anderson have the other points. And Rauai, the only player to finish for Italy inside right now. But Italy struggling one of seven from the field. But of course, it is early doors in the penultimate Rep Charge tournament where so far the Netherlands and Germany have punched their ticket to Paris. Netherlands will be joining the 
their women counterparts, Mariska Bayer, Bo Kramer, Shekhova, Zina Wiemenhoff, Julia Wundersprung. Your boys will be there in Paris as well, the Germans. They will be there as well, and the Germany women's team will be competing in the women's repcharge taking place on the 17th in Osaka, Japan. No doubt inspired by what they just saw about a half, well, about an hour ago now, roughly, as Germany beat Iran. Papi. Rawai, who's got Italy's only score at the moment. Ten on the shot clock for the Azzurri, as Carasino just goes for it. And didn't get that friendly roll. It was unkind to him. And here is Anderson. Italy now one of eight from the field. Higgins, who only has two points right now, has it again. And Higgins has it stripped away. And if Canada will keep the ball. Italy 53% from downtown. Canada just a shade under 50% as Anderson gets the friendly roll around the rim for two. He now has four. Of course, Italy relies so much on their dynamic trio of Carasino, Papi, and Benzetti. And all three have just had a touch in this possession. Benzetti to Papi. Papi on the catch and shoot. Goes glass. Here's Higgins, 4.43 remaining. In the first, Higgins with a bit of room, but misses the two. Arasino, Papi, Benzetti. Carasino, a lot of the touches of the ball going through those three players, and Carasino puts it in. And Benzetti just adjusts his vest. 10 to 6 in favour of Canada. No doubt the Canada fans watching on the IWBF YouTube channel delighted with the start. But it's not how you start, it's how you finish. As Anderson puts up a three, rattles around and out. And Benzetti picks up the loose ball. Papi had a bit of room, but decided not to shoot. He was a little off balance anyway. Now puts it up, and he'll go to the foul line. Now, what can you say about Giulio Papi? Probably been the most electrifying player at this Repcharge tournament, averaging 22.7 points a game. For Italy, also averages just under seven rebounds as well. Only Mendel Optinert averages more points than Papi. He averages 25 a game, leading the way. A step chuck from the foul line, no good. Rebounded by Jasmine, and Higgins has it. Six on the shot clock for Higgins. He's got to put up something. A step chuck from the foul line again. Money on the buzzer. Garen, a step chuck. Representing Team Saskatchewan. And a major contributor to the offense for Canada. Carasino with all kinds of room, but doesn't make Canada pay. Entering the final three minutes of the first period, and here is Higgins. Higgins met by Carasino. Higgins looking for space, goes for the elbow shot, and Carasino the rebound. Already Carasino, well, that's his first rebound. He's shooting one of five from the field, mind, as Puppy lets one go and gets it to go. 
One point game. Excuse me, three point game. Promise I'm not getting ahead of myself. Here is Higgins. Higgins putting the moves on Papi Delaire, blocked by Rowai. Vincent Delaire, who had great success under the basket early on, rejected by Italy's number 14. Papi looking to take advantage. In and out, foul called though. Late call, but the right call, and Giulio Papi will go to the foul line. One or two already from the strike today. Shooting just one or two or four from the field. And a timeout has been called by Canada. They just want to talk it over. It was a good start from Canada, a quick 6-0 run. But Italy have rallied and now trail by three with 2.10 remaining here in the first quarter. And a big hello to everyone on the IWBF YouTube channel. Great to have you on board from the Azure Arena here in Antibes. Great to have you on board wherever you are across the globe. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe to the IWBF YouTube channel. We're nearing 300 new subscribers from this tournament alone and the women's lap charge is to come in two days time in Osaka, Japan. Don't forget to get involved as well on all the social media platforms using that hashtag last chance for Paris. And for Canada and Italy, they know this is their only chance now. Italy 3-0. In Group B, Canada 0-3 in Group A. They were moments away from their first win yesterday against Iran before Mohamed Hassan Sayari's heroics denied them in what was the game or one of the games of the tournament. There's been so many enticing and ex exciting encounters. And both of them seem to involve Iran. They were involved in a one-point uh, thriller against France on the opening day. Lost out there, but made amends and came up clutch against the Canadians. Anderson. Anderson putting the moves on Canasino. Gives it up to Delaire. Delaire finds Jasmine. Jasmine with six to shoot for Canada. That's a trademark shot for Anderson, but he missed it. Gets it back off a step chuck and gets the bucket and the foul. Pat Anderson wants another shot at the Paralympics. Uh, and the last time he won a gold medal back in 2012. Got three triple doubles, averaged 25 points as Canada won all eight of their games en route to the gold. And as Papi has it. Papi finds Bedzetti. Bedzetti, who hasn't scored yet, still waiting to get off the mark, gets his own rebound. It was tipped by Boganelli, but Anderson has it. Anderson with Puppy for company, but Benzetti dispossesses it. Parasino. Entering the final minute of this first period. Puppy. Carasino fading away. And Anderson with the rebound. Here is Higgins. Anderson, back to Higgins. Final 40 seconds of the first. Anderson still has it. Shot clock winding down. And the finish, no, it's not. It's missed by Jasmine. And away come Italy with Benzetti looking to make Canada pay. Here is Puppy. Puppy, a long two off the glass, too strong. As nearly a steal from Rawai, the 
Defensive specialist for Italy who does come up with it. Here is Carosino. Final seconds of the first. 15 to 11 in favor of Canada. Puppy puts it up. No good, and Higgins with the rebound, and that ends the first quarter. Italy have fought back, but Canada at the summit right now, leading 15 to 11. As Pat Anderson has seven points, Giulio Papi also has seven for Italy. Those are your two high men. Papi shooting two of four from the field. And Pat Anderson, three of six, as we look at the highlights of the first quarter. And the Antibes Sharks mascot, Sharky, is in the house today. And fans love the fact that he's here. He's giving us high fives. And even during the uh, last game between Germany and Iran, he even gave me a massage. It's quite nice of him. I needed it as well. Action has been fast and furious throughout our time here at the Azure Arena. And it is the final day, and that's where the action is just that little more intense. There is so much on the line. For the Netherlands and Germany, they can relax, they can celebrate. They can open up the champagne and celebrate a ticket to Paris. But for Canada, Italy, France, Morocco, they still have to wait to see who will board that plane to Paris. As you see, Coach Color de Gusto there just giving some instructions to his team. Cool, calm, and collected right now. What will that be like as the game wears on and it's still all to play for? Also impressive as well that there's only been three team fouls in the uh, first quarter. So no real foul trouble to speak of. Game played in good spirits. It's intense. Uh, but both teams well disciplined on defense. And making these referees' jobs just that little bit better as well. Referees have been absolutely superb traveling from all over the globe to be here. And they have been absolutely fantastic. Here is Anderson getting the second quarter started for Canada. Putting the moves on Bedzetti. Rarai comes to meet him. Delaire has it. And Delaire stolen away. Canasino comes up with it two on two. Now Italy at back, so advantage Italy. Puppy wide open. Grazzi. One possession game in the early stages of the second. Canada looking to extend their lead. Delaire banks one home. Here is Papi for Italy. Papi to Carasino. Four to shoot. They've got to get busy here, Italy. Bedzetti puts it up. And this is everything. Dallaire says, thank you, I'll take that. And here is Higgins. Canada now looking to build their own momentum. Italy had theirs. Here is Dallaire. Higgins. Anderson goes for the shot. High off the glass. Made it look effortless. Nine for Anderson. He joins Papi as the game's leading scorer of Edzetti. That was a high degree of difficulty. And he was off balance, missed everything. Higgins. Higgins going to the hoop. And all of a sudden, Canada have burst into a 6-0 run and lead by eight. Carosino, Italy now with their backs to the wall and need something to get going. Puppy to Benzetti. Benzetti still yet to score. Carasino, that's long. Anderson rebounds. 
Anderson already with seven boards to go with nine points. They need a big performance from what many believe is the greatest player of all time. Inside the lair, off the window and in. Pat Anderson turns playmaker and Vincent Dallaire says thank you. Eight for Dallaire. Canosino. All the time in the world from the foul line money. Much needed score for Italy. But they still trail. They've trailed by as many as ten. Here is Anderson. Puts it up again and knocks it down, Pat Anderson. This is the Pat Anderson that Canada want to see. 6.56 remaining, Canada by 10, timeout Italy. Great to see a lot of Canada fans watching on the IWBF YouTube channel. Great to have Molly and Lucy from Ottawa on board, and Ottawa will be the focus of attention in 2026. Canada hosting the IWBF World Championships. What an event that will be, and many are hoping, from the Canada fans that I've spoke to, many will be hoping that Pat Anderson will have his swan song in Ottawa. Or perhaps he might continue on, who knows? The only man who knows right now is Pat Anderson himself. And right now he's having a great game. 11 points, seven boards, and three assists. He's, to his credit, not had the best rep charge tournament. Three for 14 in their opening day loss to the Netherlands. Eight of 20 against France, had 18 points though in that game. And right now, he's having a great game. He and Higgins are the only players that average in double figures for Canada in this left charge. Higgins 19, Anderson 16, Puppy short. And here is Higgins, who had that triple-double yesterday against Iran, but it ended in agonizing defeat. Higgins, Higgins blocked away by Benzetti, and Santarelli into the game for the first time, collects the loose ball, and a foul called. Ahmed Rewai heads to the bench. Canada, though, up 10. Looking to end the European invasion and a potential hat-trick of European teams that advance to Paris today. For definite playing one of the best games they've had in this left charge and a steal by Higgins. It's one-on-one, -on -one. Higgins off to the races. Lays it up, lays it in, Colin Higgins. Six for Higgins. <laughs> Four minutes played in the second, and Italy are cold right now. Carosino, back iron, it goes. Rebound to Stepchuk. Italy, six of 23 from the field. That's under 25. Anderson, again, no. Carosino rebounds. Calling for calm, Santarelli. Santarelli, why not? You've got the space, puts it in. Francesco Santarelli with his first field goal. Higgins bumped by Santarelli. Good defense from Italy, and the miss there by Jonathan Vermette. Carosino, Papi, eight to shoot. Papi marked by a step chuck, gets away from him, but short with that, and the rebound by Vermet.
There is a step chuck looking for options. That's a risky pass, but it just about finds Higgins. Eight for Anderson. Shot clock winding down. Lob pass, and Higgins can't reach that. I've seen Anderson hit those shots from just about there many, many times over his illustrious career. Decided to pass it that time as Bo Hedges, Nick Gonson come in. A step chuck and Higgins head to the bench. Gonson, who led the way for Canada at the World Championships. But so far, only averaging just under five points here at the rep charge. Tange into the game for the first time as well for Italy. Puppy puts it up and knocks it down. And Julio Puppy into double figures. Anderson, excuse me, Hedges. Hedges has it. Hedges lobs it to Gonson. Gonson under the basket was blocked by Benzetti. He believes it's all ball, but a foul's been called. As the maple leaves are waving here at the Azure Arena. Just imagine what it'll be like in 2026 in Ottawa. As Gonsin misses the first. Of course, already qualified before this Lepchage tournament. Great Britain, Spain, Australia and the USA. We've got a number of uh, fans and ex-players from Great Britain getting involved on the YouTube, uh, YouTube stream. Johnny Pollock and Sinclair Thomas, just two of those decorated Great Britain Paralympians in their own right. Puppy misses the two. Great to have you both on board as well, guys. And anyone else, wherever you are across the globe. Here is Anderson, 3.24 remaining in the second. Tange with the defense on Anderson and a turnover as Hedges couldn't hold on under the basket. And Bo Hedges, who began playing competitive wheelchair basketball back in 1996, won Paralympic silver in Beijing. And of course, gold in 2012, aiming for a third Paralympic appearance. There's Tange has it. Here is Papi. Santarelli. Tange, who can shoot from there. Santarelli with seven on the shot clock. Good defense from Hedges and Anderson. Puppy airballs it and a foul. I think that's on Boganelli. Vincent Delaire wants an unsportsmanlike. That's ambitious at best. But good defense from Bo Hedges on that possession. And as mentioned, began playing in 96. Loves to give back to the sport as well. Always volunteering and coaching in the Ontario province where he's based. And certainly looking to inspire the next generation of Canada wheelchair basketball players. An illustrious history for Canada. Of course, Pat Anderson, the number 12, a big part of that. He announced himself onto the scene in 97 at the Junior World Championships. Also an accomplished musician as well. And a bit of a plug for his band, The Layawakes, layawakes.com, with his wife, Anna. Some really, really good music. And here he is on the ball. 2.45 remaining in the half, and he's fouled by Francisco Santarelli. A lot of love for Bo Hedges on the YouTube stream as well. Very popular fan favorite in Canada, no doubt about it. Great person as well, got to speak to him before this rep charge. Really pleasant man. Here is Gonsin. Inside it goes. Off balance, but the finish from Vermette. 
who made his international debut at the 2009 World Junior Championships, and now an established member of the senior roster, gets the score. And Anderson dispossesses the pass from Poppy, and now Canada are breaking. Dallaire, what a pass, Gonsin, what a finish. That is trademark Canada basketball. And they have exploded into a 32-19 lead, and Italy still in neutral. Tange, they must respond. Bedzetti goes to the line. Sabri Bedzetti in foul trouble as well. He has three fouls, but will have a chance for his first points of the game. 155 remaining in the half. Italy, who without question have been probably the team of the tournament and definitely good value for their spot in Paris, but right now it's being put to the ultimate test by the Parapan game bronze medalists. Canada have enjoyed their stay in France and they want to come back only to Paris this time. Benzetti misses the first. Benzetti from the foul line makes the second. As Benzetti roughly takes around three trips to the line, just under four, in fact, throughout this lap charge tournament. As a timeout is called on the floor, Italy who actually lead, who lead the rep charge in points a game. Steals as well, they average 7.7 steals a game. Two blocks a game, 49% from the field. But only a 48% free throw shooting team. While Canada shooting 64%, they're actually second in free throw shooting in this rep charge as Coach Ferriani directing his troops on what to do next and maybe in the next few possessions as well. 155 remaining in the half in the penultimate rep charge tournament game as the tickets to Paris are now being handed out. The Netherlands and Germany already have theirs at the expense of Colombia and Iran. Can Canada stop the domination of Europe here? They are up by 12. Italy subpar, it must be said. Higgins a long three, that's way off. Higgins, a good three-point shooter, especially in this Repcharge tournament. Only Julio Papi has made more, and Rodrigo Perez actually has made more three-pointers than Higgins. Here is Tangy, Tangy a long two, that's off the back. And Hedges collects the loose change. Gonsin. Gonshin going to the hoop. Tough layup gets it to go. As Nick Gonshin looking to recreate the form he had at the World Championships in Dubai when Canada finished in sixth place. He averaged 16.5 points a game in that tournament, only averaging around five here in Antibes. Gioretti into the game and on the ball. Tange a three. And Boganelli was looking to sneak past Gonsin for the offensive board, but Gonsin was wise to it. Delaire. Here is Hedges. 
Higgins. Final 40 seconds and eight on the shot clock for Canada. Patient build-up play with a risky pass from Higgins. Bedzetti and Gonsin were fighting for it. 34.8 seconds remaining here in the half. It was patient build-up play from Canada, but that final pass from Higgins, a little risky. He could have shot that himself. 34 to 20 in favor of the Canadians. 34.8 seconds remaining. Andrea Tiaretti, one of the main offensive stars at the 2018 World Championships in Hamburg. Santarelli from the foul line. No good. Both teams now going a little cold from the uh, field. Italy shooting below 25%. Canada's still shooting a good number, over 55. Gonsi. And Gonsi's pass goes straight to Dimitri Dange. And Gioretti looking to respond for Italy. Puts up a long three, no good. And that'll do the first half here at the Azure Arena where Canada are in control. They lead by 14 points, 34 to 20. Patrick Anderson has 11 points, seven rebounds and three assists. You can chuck in a steal for good measure. They really need him to have the game of the tournament here today. And his guidance on five of nine shooting has given Canada the advantage. Here's Giulio Papi, the high man for Italy with 11 points, only shooting four of 12 from the field. Here are the highlights of the first half. Vincent Delaire had an brilliant start for Canada, who started on a 6-0 run thanks to his great play, especially his movement under the basket for the score. And Pat Anderson alongside his scoring has grabbed a number of rebounds. Trademark Anderson shot right there. And there, here was his first field goal. This is what got it all started. Julio Papi, though, 11 points, shooting four for 12 from the field. That was his first field goal, followed by his second right there. But Italy, with it all to do, going into the second half, they trail Canada 34 to 20. And we'll be back in roughly 11 minutes' time. Don't go anywhere, folks. Un match des Chicago Bulls, on l'a vu également en championnat d'Europe de basket, on l'a vu en Euroleague. Il est très très lourd pour ce spectacle. Et attention, c'est parti Allez, make some noise, ok Alors, que dis-vous, on y va, on a courage Match from Canada, en top of France et en tenue from Italy. On est accompagné de Charty, Charty qui vit là. Gangnam 
ce débat euh, pendant 3 minutes. Et moi je vous confirme, euh, euh, mon cher Renaud, tout le monde est vraiment sympathique en blague avec nos amis euh, euh, canadiens. Moi je voulais aussi remercier nos, nos amis colombiens qui viennent de nous faire découvrir des moments incroyables. Uh, je sais pas, uh, I don't know if you hear people from Colombia. Muchas gracias por uh, los caramelos. Thank you so much for candies. So good. Thank you so much. <laughs> Voilà, donc on a même une distribution de bonbons, on a gagné avec les Italiens. J'adore cette compétition, j'adore cette compétition. Il faut donc venir plus souvent sur ces compétitions. Mais en tout cas, je suis sûr que vous avez découvert ce mouvement de sport aujourd'hui. Ouais. On le voit, du très très haut niveau, une très bonne ambiance. Et pour le coup, euh, voilà, des résultats, des émotions, des émotions, de la stratégie et une pratique du basket un petit peu différente, mais beaucoup bien intéressante. Et une pratique de l'anglais, de l'espagnol, de l'italien, de français, de l'anglais, c'est pas Welcome back everybody to the Azure Arena here in Antibes, France, along the French Riviera, where Canada uh, lead Italy 34 to 20. Heading into the third quarter, Italy, of course, have trailed by 19 points against Germany yesterday and came back to win. So they're in kind of familiar position as they were yesterday so do not count them out but canada very good value for their 14 point cushion led by patrick anderson who has 11 points it's been a team effort though for canada vincent delaire has eight colin hickens six nick gonshin has five For Italy, Giulio Puffy leading the way with 11 points. Filippo Carosino has four. Hello everyone, welcome wherever you are across the world. It's great to have you on board on the IWBF YouTube channel. John Hobbs keeping you company for the second half of this game. And of course, this is the penultimate game of this inaugural 2024 IWBF Men's Repechage Tournament. Following on from this game, we will have France against Morocco. And of course, starting in two days' time, in the Far East, in Osaka, Japan, it'll be the Women's Repechage Tournament as Germany, Thailand, Algeria, Australia, Spain, France, Canada, and Japan do battle for the coveted spots in the women's section of the Paralympics. Great Britain, Spain, USA, Australia, Germany, and the Netherlands have booked their tickets in the men's Paralympics. Who will join them next? Will it be Italy or Canada? Italy with it all to do, Bezzetti going inside, first possession, misses the layup. He only has one point thus far. Uncharacteristic for him as a technical foul has been called on Sabri Bezzetti, and that's four fouls on Sabri Bezzetti. So Pat Anderson will go to the foul line for the technical and possession for Canada. That is big for Canada, who already lead by 15, their biggest of the game now. And Bedzetti in big foul trouble. Higgins looking to take advantage. Higgins to Anderson off the feed from Jasmine. Puts it in. All string. Pat Anderson. 14 for Patrick Anderson. Carosino. Santarelli. Papi, he needs a huge third quarter. Santarelli fakes a step jump, goes to the basket and gets the friendly roll. Leaving Garrett a step jump for dust and then floated one in. 
Anderson. Higgins. Putting the moves on Benzetti. Cross it goes to Jasmine. Jasmine, all kinds of time, goes to the glass and to great effect. Jasmine's first field goal. As Carasino puts up a long two. And Higgins with the rebound. Higgins now with 10 rebounds to go with six points. Here he goes to the basket. Goes up and goes in and a foul. Canada in dreamland. And Italy trail by 19. But they've been in this position before. And they came back and beat Germany. But they have it all to do against Canada here in the early stages. And Chad Jasmine's family watching on the IWBF YouTube channel. No doubt cheering any and every Canada basket, especially when Jazzy is involved. Eight fifteen remaining in the third period, and Canada have raced out to a 7-2 start to the second half. Worrying times for Italy, but they're a strong-minded team. As we saw against Germany, one of the teams of this Lepershage tournament thus far, but their backs are against the wall against this strong Canada nation looking for that elusive first win, but that elusive first win will give them a trip to Paris in the summer. Colin Higgins will go to the foul line. Higgins, who has averaged just shy of 20 points a game here in the Azure Arena. Doesn't get that friendly roll. These rims have been extremely unforgiving. And a whistle has gone. And a free free throw for Filippo Carasino. And a chance for Italy to just slowly but surely eat away at Canada's lead, but they need to feast right now because Canada in the ascendancy. Still early doors in the third. Carasino currently on five points, but shooting two of 11 from the field thus far. Tangy on the catch and shoot, that's way off to the right. And Anderson with the loose ball. Pat Anderson now on eight rebounds. 14 points for good measure. Colin Higgins two points away from a double-double. Eight points, ten boards. Here is Higgins. Passes it off to Jasmine. Jasmine to Anderson. Shot clock is winding down. Anderson's got to get busy. Puts it up short. Santarelli the rebound. First rebound of the day for Francisco Santarelli to go with his four points on two of three shooting. Here he is on the ball. Carasino under the basket. Two of 12 now from the field for him. It's a shot he normally makes. Higgins to Anderson. Anderson with three Italy players all over him.
be interesting to see who the foul is on. It's on Ahmed Rawai. Karasino put his hand up, but Ahmed Rawai was the culprit. Sabri Bedzetti was the other player involved. He's on four fouls. He's got to be careful. Anderson. Here is Higgins. Shot clock at eight. Dallaire inside. Dallaire will go to the foul line. He nearly had the three-point play, and we've seen him do that all game long. Sublime off-ball movement. Rolling to the hoop. And on this occasion, didn't get the drop, but will go to the foul line to make it count anyway. And a chance for Canada to take a 20-point lead. Their biggest lead has been 19. Coach Matteo Ferriani, stern-faced. As Dallaire misses the second, and Benzetti has it. Benzetti, who has averaged just shy of 12 points here in this Lepechage tournament, only has one point here, coming from the strike. Four to shoot for Italy. Carasino got to put something up over Dallaire. Money on the buzzer. Could that be the long two that ignites an Italy run here? Or can Canada keep their double-digit lead strong? Higgins has it. Higgins created a bit of space for himself, a step chuck. Back to Higgins. Higgins passes it to Anderson. Great ball movement from Canada. And the finish from Chad Jasmine. Second field goal for Jasmine. And a fourth assist for Anderson. Santarelli, that's short. And Anderson, his ninth rebound. He's now one rebound shy of a double-double himself. Higgins. Looks to Anderson. Nine to shoot, Jasmine. Putting the moves on Santarelli, a foul has been called close to the basket. I think that's on Ahmed Rawai. If that is, that'll be his second. Just double check who it is. It is the number 14. That is definitely his second foul. There it is on your screen. Just bumping Garata Stepchuk, and Italy are in the penalty with 5.27 remaining in the third. For a first quarter that only had three team fouls, Italy now piling up the foul count. And Canada still with just one team foul. And Canada are five of eight from the stripe tonight. Here is Bezzetti. Pulling the moves on Higgins, drives along the baseline. Beautiful layup and one. Big play for Sabri Bedzetti with his first field goal of this game. Averaged 15.6 points, eight rebounds, and actually led the European Championships in steals with just under three a game. Had 21 steals overall in Rotterdam last summer. He wants a first Paralympic appearance. Italy going for a first Paralympic appearance since London 2012. They placed in 10th place in the British capital. Their only win coming in the group phase against South Africa, 61-32. Lost their classification game to Japan. But they won another shot at Paris as Bedzetti misses the free throw and it's 45 to 27. Of course, when Italy were last in the Paralympics, Canada were claiming gold at that time. Higgins along the baseline, and Bedzetti rebounds. Bedzetti has eight rebounds today, and a foul has been called. Not sure if that's a continuation of play. It's not, so it's not going to be two shots. That's only Canada's second team foul of the third period. Of course, following on from this, the host nation, France. 
wanting to represent their home country at the Paralympics. They have to get past Morocco first. And the African champions will not make it easy for them as a timeout has been called by Canada. France, Morocco due to tip off at 7 p.m. local time. Of course, use the hashtag when you're talking about this repechage tournament using the hashtag last chance for Paris on all your social media platforms. Get involved. And if you're in the venue and you're for some reason watching this as well, send us a picture, put it on your IG stories, your Snapchat stories, whatever stories you can put on social media. Not exactly social media savvy, so I'm not sure what stories entail. But let us know where you are either way. And you never know, you might get a repost from the IWBF's official feeds. Great to have so many people on board and as mentioned earlier, Sinclair Thomas, a former Paralympian with GB in Sydney and Beijing. He's getting involved as well on YouTube. Great to have you on board, sir, and good to see you pretty much watching every game throughout this tournament. You dedicated man, you. Here is Tangy. Tangy with seven to shoot for Italy, puts it in. Fabio Raimonde into the game for the first time for Italy, the number nine. Here is Bo Hedges back into the game. Higgins, a step chuck, and Jasmine have headed to the bench. As Gonshin is also in, and a foul has been called. Four seventeen remaining in Italy have chipped away at the lead slowly but surely, but still with it all to do. And here is Fabio Raimondi. Raimondi goes for three himself and banks one home. You can see what it means to Fabio Raimondi and the fans there in the stands. Thirteen point game, Anderson. Anderson dumps it off to Gonshin, eight to shoot for the Canadians. Gonshin over Tange, knocks it down. That's a much needed score for Italy, just when Italy, for Canada, just when Italy were building momentum. Raimondo goes for it again, and this time it's a heat check. Hedges to Gonsin, what a pass from Bo Hedges, and the finish from Gonsin over Carasino. Here is Carasino as a whistle has gone. Good friend Dylan Cummings, bigging up Fabio Raimundo. Three oh seven remaining, and Sabri Benzetti at the line has managed to stay in the game as well. Coach De Gusto putting a lot of faith in Sabri Benzetti, who makes the first free throw. Of course, Benzetti, one of the big three for Italy, alongside Papi and Carosino. The three of them have led the team at the World Championships in Dubai and at the European Championships in Rotterdam. Anderson, Anderson gets it to go. Entering the final three minutes as Carasino gets bumped by Gonsin. Benzetti on the floor, offensive foul has been called. So Canada get the ball. Oui, 
And it's a fifth foul on Sabri Benzetti. So Fab Sabri Benzetti has fouled out. That's a huge blow for Italy. Not had the best of games today. One of six from the field, eight rebounds, four points for Sabri Benzetti. But a big loss for Italy. He could put points up on the hurry, but now he's just going to have to wait from the bench. Delaire inside. Canada get two shots. Italy, who trail by 19 against Germany, have trailed here big today. They trailed by as many as 20, but now face incredible odds as Sabri Bedzetti has fouled out with 2.31 remaining in the third, plus 10 minutes of the fourth to go. As Vincent Dallaire misses the first. He began playing wheelchair basketball back in 2002. Best showing really in the bronze medal winning team at the Parapan Games at 10 points, seven, five of seven from the field in the win over Argentina in Santiago, Chile and has played well here today. Puppy has to respond for three, and he has to really get Italy going. Gonson, Anderson. Anderson to respond, oh, it's off the back iron. Rebounded Carosino, here is Puppy again. Italy need him more than ever now. Spanu, he puts it up, he knocks it down! Some big shots for Italy, and here come the Azzurri! Gonsin, Anderson, 134 remaining in the third. Gonsin again. Anderson gets it back, putting the moves on Puppy. Puppy has fouled Anderson, so Pat Anderson will go to the foul line. Patrick Anderson, 16 points, 10 rebounds. And for who many consider to be the greatest wheelchair basketball player of all time, they need some Michael Jordan-esque clutch moments from that man to get Canada to Paris. But they lead 52-39 right now, 126 remaining in the third. And a brief delay of play. Pat Anderson will check out. And Colin Higgins, who's two points away from a double-double himself, comes back in. Raimundi to Papi. Papi lobs it up. Carasino collects and finishes. 11-point game, entering the final minute of the third. Italy have taken this third period 21 to 18 thus far. But that 19 to 9 second period has damaged their hopes of a Paralympic place. They're not going to give up, though. Italy, a team that wants to be in Paris as Nick Gonson misses the first. A Regina Saskatchewan native, born actually in Sarajevo in Bosnia-Herzegovina. And misses both, but Colin Higgins gets the rebound. Hedges, the veteran Hedges all alone, misses the layup. Carasino with the rebound. Italy come back again. Chance to trim this to a single-digit lead after trailing by 20. Tangi inside to Papi. Papi goes up, 
banks it. No, he doesn't bank it home, but he'll go to the line. And the Canada fans there just getting a little nervous. Foul is on Nick Gonson. That'll be his third foul as well. And Puppy makes the first. Italy trail by 10, make it nine. They trail by as many as 20. They're going one better at the moment than what they did against the Germans. However, they still trail here and there's a lot of time. You will be seeing a roller coaster of emotions now as we enter the final seconds of this third quarter. Gonsin, six to shoot. Vermette puts it in. Jonathan Vermette representing Quebec. And that ends the third quarter as Vermette punches the air. A much needed score for Canada. They try, they lead by double digits. Italy trailing by as many as 20. And it's still all to play for. Even though it's an 11-point game, it's still all to play for here as Pat Anderson has 17 to lead the way for Canada. Leads all scorers, actually, for Canada. He has a double-double of 17 points and 10 rebounds, all of them defensive. For Italy, Giulio Papi is the high man, 16 points. Italy, though, shooting just 34 percent from the field. Canada faring much better. They're shooting 58 percent. As fans having fun on the court alongside on Team Sharks mascot Sharky who's been giving away gifts all day to the fans here inside this wonderful facility where the hospitality has been absolutely first class. The volunteers making it all happen here in this Antibes Arena. And a big shout out and a big thank you to our partners and sponsors, the IWBF and Handy Sport for organizing this event. The local organizing committee alongside the official Partners, EDF, Moulton, Tissot, and RGK. A few of the RGK people who are working here in Antibes have already packed their bags and heading over to Osaka, Japan, because in two days' time, the women's rep charge will be taking place with the first game on the 17th, hitting Algeria and Australia, the Netherlands, China, Great Britain and the USA await. Here is Higgins. A step chuck. A step chuck inside Gonson with the finish. Tanya. Spanu. Raimundo, back to Spanu, inside to Carasino, that's too easy. Vincent Delaire was on the wrong side of Filippo Carasino. And now Carasino moves on to 11. Higgins. Looking for that double-double to back up the triple-double he had against Iran. Gonsin, the extra pass, Delaire puts it in. Great find, Nick Gonsin, great patience, and the extra pass was simply divine. Papi. Raimundo. Raimundo looking for room, goes inside, almost easily glides his way in and lays it up. Defender! 
Italy need. They've already had one. They need a few trademark three pointers from the Italy number nine, Fabio Raimundo. Here is Higgins. He was looking for the three himself. Finds a bit of room. Goes a bit closer to the hoop. Passes it off. Gonsin. Gonsin back to Higgins. Higgins misses the layup and Carasino with the rebound. Chance to reduce it to single figures again. Spano. Tango. To Papi. Spano along three, strings one. Third three pointer for Italy in the second half. And it's an eight point game. And now the fans of Italy are making themselves heard. Canada have gone silent. Higgins puts it up, knocks it down. 10 points for Higgins, double double. 10 and 12. And the 10 point lead restored. Just over three minutes played in this fourth quarter and without question, what an ending we have in store here. As we just have an issue with the game clock and the shot clock. Italy will get the ball back. 14 seconds on the shot clock, 7.25 remaining in the fourth and final quarter. Tangy. Carasino, Papi. Looking for Spanu, but Papi will have to go it alone over Gonsin. No good. Rebound on the follow. Spanu misses it with one hand. And a foul has been called. As Higgins has it, Canada up 10. They've led for all of this game so far, Canada. Italy have not enjoyed any sort of lead here against the Parapan bronze medalists. Gonshin back iron it goes and the rebound by Dimitri Tange. Raimunde. Raimunde goes for three and it's off to the right. And the pass from Gonshin almost finds Garrida Stepchuk. He thinks he was fouled by Julia Puffy. <laughs> As Galata Stepchuk is a bit frustrated with how that play transpired. He was found by Gonsin, but couldn't retrieve the pass. So defense was good by Julio Papi, even though Stepchuk thought that was a foul. Spanu, and that's too much for Fabio Raimundo to handle. Six twenty-six remaining. Timeout has been called as two more tickets remain for Paris Paralympics, taking place on the final week of August and running through to the first week of September. See some highlights. Three-pointer there from Dimitri Tange. He has five points right now. This was the basket that gave Colin Higgins his double-double. And restored Canada's double-digit lead, 60 to 50, with 6.26 remaining here in the fourth period. The Netherlands and Germany have already secured their spot. Their last chance for Paris was accepted and for 
Iran and Colombia. Theirs was denied in heartbreaking fashion. Can Canada stop a hat trick of European wins here with a win themselves representing the Americas? Anderson to a step chuck. Higgins trying to put the move on Spanu. Gives it to Anderson. Anderson over three Italy players, and he is foul. Gonsin is on the bench, replaced by Anderson. Only Italy's second team foul, and a first foul on Filippo Carasino. Anderson again. Pulling the moves on Carasino. Six to shoot for Anderson and for Canada. Anderson will have to put it up. Shot clock winding down. And it's off. Good defense from Italy. Suffocating yet disciplined defense. Papi. Spanu. Carasino. Italy passing the ball nicely, but they're only passing it around at half court here. Five to shoot for Italy. Papi a three off the back iron. Of course, he was four or four from downtown against Colombia, including one very similar to the one he just made. That was his fourth three-pointer and probably the pick of the bunch, but he missed that one. Great to have more than a 1,000 people watching on the IWBF YouTube channel. Great to have you all on board. Let us know where you're watching, who you're supporting. Any particular favorite player? Might even be a fan of the referees. Higgins. A lot of time on the shot clock for Canada. Higgins puts up a short two, goes glass, doesn't go. Puppy rebounds. Puppy with five boards now. Entering the halfway point of this final quarter. Tange thought about the three, decides to drive inside, kicks it out. Garasino. And the gap again trimmed to single figures. It's an eight point game. Canada led by as many as 20. Higgins puts the moves on Puppy, goes inside, pretty. Again, double-digit lead restored. Canada, who have led for all of this game, from tip to this moment. Tangi, looking for help. Anderson looks to steal it off him, finds Papi. Six on the shot clock for Julio Papi. Someone's got to step up. And Spanu misses everything. Good defense from Anderson, but also good defense around the perimeter by Canada. Getting to the business side of the game here. 4-7 remain. Higgins thought about it, a step chuck at the top. Higgins puts up, well, nearly put up a, a two there, dumps it off inside, it goes, Vermet inside. <laughs> Made his Paralympic <laughs> debut in Rio, Jonathan Vermet in 2016, wants to go to Paris this summer. Spanu a three, knocks it down, that's a second three for Claudio Spanu. Two of three from downtown for Claudio Spanu off the bench. Anderson, a step chuck, the extra pass, Higgins. Again, Canada wearing down the shot clock and a three second violation has been called. Jonathan Vermet just camping out a little longer than usual. Andrea Gioretti back into the game and Giulio Papi on the bench. 
Gioretti can put big numbers up, the veteran, and he's on the ball now. Spanu, shot clock at 10. Gioretti over Anderson. And Higgins the rebound. 15 rebounds for Colin Higgins to go with 12 points on 50% shooting. Garrett to Stepchuk. Looking to pass it off to his role model, Patrick Anderson. Big reason why he started playing wheelchair basketball for Garrett Stepchuk was that man on the ball. And uh, the whistle is gone. Great to have so many people on board on the IWBF YouTube channel. Keep those numbers going. Tell a friend to tell a friend to tell their mum, tell their dad, let them tell their friends that this is happening. It's great to have you all on board as Gioretti has it inside. It goes and banked home by Tange. Of course, a lot of Great Britain fans watching on. They'll be at the uh, Paris Paralympics looking to see who will join them here in Antibes. Higgins goes to the hoop. Off balance, he'll go to the line. Higgins took a hard fall. But Colin Higgins, tougher than a $2 stake, gets back up. Two twenty-one remaining in this fourth quarter. Canada still hold the advantage. A lot of time, though, for Italy to mount a comeback. They're the leading team in three-point makes and three-point percentage, Italy. And thus far in this game, they are 5 of 13 from downtown. France, Morocco are up next. And the miss there from Higgins. Uncharacteristic for Colin Higgins, who's now 0 of 2 from the stripe. 6 of 16 altogether for Canada. Feriani looks on, stern-faced, cool as you like. And so is Higgins at the second attempt. Giretti looks for Spanu, finds him. Giretti a three, that's off to the right. And from the moment that left his hand, he knew it. Sigh of relief for Canada, 2.04 remaining. And now we're getting to that stage of the game where time is not Italy's friend. Canada, who lost all three of their group games, could get their first and most significant win here. Anderson gets it to go and won! Pat Anderson! Over Dimitri Tange gets the foul and will head to the foul line for the bonus. 19 for Anderson. As we mentioned earlier, he's not enjoyed this repechage tournament. He's not shot the ball very well. They needed him to have a big game tonight. And so far, 19 points on 8 of 15 shooting, 10 rebounds, 5 assists. Without doubt, head and shoulders his game of the tournament thus far. 1.48 remaining, Canada by 11. Italy needs scores. They've trailed by as many as 20, got it down to as little as seven. Gioretti. Gioretti inside, Raimundi couldn't hold on. 
And the disappointment on the face of the veteran tells the story. Timeout called, 1.36 remaining. As we see some highlights of the fourth period. Jonathan Vermet going glass, putting it in. The three points are there from Spanu. But right now, Canada, one minute and 36 seconds away from Paris. The Maple Leafs are flying high here in Antibes. Italy before today, 3-0. And without question, the most exciting team of the tournament. They've led this repechage in almost virtually every team statistic there is. Points per game, steals, blocks, field goal percentage, three-point makes, three-point attempts. They have topped it all, but they have come across a Canada side, zero and three. But inspired by their performance against Iran, heartbreak at the end, but determined not to make sure that happens again. And they've led from start until this moment. They are on the home straight. Italy in the penalty. A smile on Pat Anderson's face. But it's not over yet. A lot of time. It's a first foul on Claudio Spanu. Anderson misses the first. That's only his second miss from the strike tonight, four of six. Anderson strings a second. Italy letting the ball roll, keeping the shot clock still and the game clock still. Raimundi dumps it off, a lob to Carasino and a foul. Is there a late Azuri charge? Could it be? It's a 10-point game, chance to make it a nine-point game. Filippo Carasino, who led Italy in points and assists at the European Championships in Rotterdam. 16 points, six assists a game. Only player to actually dish out 50 or more assists on the team. But getting it done points-wise, rattles in at the free throw. It's a single-digit game, but Italy needs stops and need quick scores. And for Canada, just take as much time on the shot clock as possible and get the foul, because Italy are in the bonus and Canada can just get their points and live at the line. Third foul on Fabio Raimundo. Anderson on 21 points. Makes the first vital free throws for Patrick Anderson. Canada 10 of 21 from the free throw line tonight. It's not exactly been their friend. They're second in this repechage for three, three throw percentage at 64.3. Those numbers will drop. But it doesn't matter, they want the win. Carasino off the back iron, misses nearly everything. Higgins is fouled by Tange. That's his third foul. 1.15 remaining. Higgins representing 
Rothsay, New Brunswick at the line with 1.15 remaining. Misses the first. Makes the second. It's a 12-point game. And Italy now need more than a miracle. Gioretti, Raimundi, they need some three pointers from him. Decides to go inside. Spanu to Gioretti. Shot clock at eight. Missed. Anderson rebounds. And away comes Vermet for Canada. Higgins. Anderson is screaming for it. But Anderson wants to slow it down, eat as much of the shot clock as possible. Anderson, shot clock winding down, travel. Uncharacteristic for Patrick Anderson. A travel call, but 35.6 seconds remaining. It's academic. Italy will fall at the final hurdle after winning their first three games and after stumbling at their first three hurdles. Canada make the biggest leap of all and it's a place at the Paris Paralympics. British Columbia, Manitoba, New Brunswick, Nova Scotia, Saskatchewan. This is your time to shine because Canada are heading to the Paris Paralympics. performance when they needed it the most. Canada, who suffered heartbreak yesterday at the hands of Iran on the buzzer, have bounced back in the most emphatic of ways and have toppled the mighty Italy, who are 3 and 0 before this. They have defeated the European powerhouse, 72-260. Patrick Anderson, they needed him so badly, and he came through when Canada needed him the most. 23 points, 12 rebounds, 5 assists, 53% from the field. Colin Higgins, a double-double in his own right. 14 points, 16 boards. Canada, an absolutely delightful 60% from the field. Smiles all round from the Canadians. They will be Paris bound. They will be heading to the Eiffel Tower, the Champs-Élysées. But for Italy, it's back home to Rome. And a TV appearance for them. Giulio Papi and Filippo Carasino both with 16 points. But Italy, who trailed from start to finish, just could not recover. They trailed by as many as 19 yesterday against Germany. They trailed by 20 as much here, but they just could not fight back. They got it down to as little as seven, but it wasn't to be. Highlights of a magical win for Canada. They are going to Paris. There will be no European quadruple here in Antibes. The Americas are going to be represented not just by the USA, but by their brothers in Canada. Look what it means to Pat Anderson. Look what it means to Colin Higgins and Garrida Stepchuk and everyone from Canada. And the Canada fans having some fun here at the Azure Arena. There it is. Canada have qualified for the Paris 2024 Paralympics.
congratulations to them. They've done it though, the extremely hard way, losing their first three games in the group phase, but they've come when it mattered the most and they got the job done. The Canadian flags now being given to the players. As the Antibe local organizing committee about to present Canada with gifts and the large plane ticket. And there you have the proud Canada nation. Congratulations to them. They did it the hard way. But sometimes it produces the most wonderful of results. His swan song, who knows? But one thing's for sure, he has steered Canada to Paris via Antibes. There it is, Canada qualify. The last chance saloon for Paris and Canada has taken one more of those spots. France and Morocco will contest the final ticket, but hold it aloft, Lee Melamec, your boys are heading to Paris. What a moment for those guys, for the fans here at the Azure Arena. <laughs> That's what it means to them. And for those in Canada watching, congratulations to you guys. Commiserations to Italy. Nothing to be ashamed of. What a performance they put on today but fell short at the final hurdle. Giulio Papi, Filippo Carosino with 16 points, leading the way for Italy, but it wasn't to be for them today. Join us in some time, because France and Morocco will contest the final spot. That'll tip off at 7 p.m. local time. But for now, John Hobbs signing off, and I will see you at seven o'clock. Goodbye for now. Allez, 